I'm Glenn Wagner. I'm going to be talking about some, oh, whoops, some work that we've been doing on multi-agent path planning under uncertainty. Over the past decade or so, there's been numerous advances in the field of multi-agent pathfinding, particularly in the area of provably correct and optimal or near-optimal planners. So this is actually a video of a 200 uh, robot problem that we used uh, a previous <coughs> MSTAR algorithm to solve near optimally. So the reason I have this up, besides the pretty dots, is I wanted you to look at how close to each other these robots pass. They don't actually collide if it looks like they do. That's just because of visualization error. But there is a lot of really intricate timing that the robots have to execute perfectly to avoid running into each other. And as anyone who has ever worked with a robot knows, the natural state of robots is anything but executing perfectly. <laughs> so because of the inevitable oopses that will cause any really refined problem, uh, sorry, plan to fail, there has been some interest in planning with uncertainty or uh, multi-agent pathfinding with uncertainty or map food. So there's a number of different ways you can do this. One of them uh, you can refer to as a reservation-based system, where each robot reserves different parts of the environment for their exclusive use. However, this is going to be really conservative, and it requires a lot of coordination during planning, uh, during execution of the plan. The pretty much most principled way of addressing this problem is to cast it as a POMDP. Unfortunately, we have a whole bunch of robots, which means of incredible number of states that grows exponentially with the number of robots, and POMDP solvers really don't like this. Bello and Veloso did some work on making this, uh, po solving POMDPs more tractable uh, using a DexMDP where you only did a uh, multi-robot multi POMDP right around specific interaction regions. This works, but it doesn't make it appropriate for cluttered environments where you, can't ha where you don't have these well-defined locations where the robots interact, where they could interfere with each other anywhere. The single agent path planning community has been dealing with the problems of POMPP before. And they developed an approach that I'll at least call belief space planning. The idea behind belief space planning is you take a regular single robot path planning algorithm, but then instead of tracking the position of the robot, you track a belief state as to where that robot might be and just plan for that under the resulting belief dynamics. This is substantially more efficient than solving a POMDP because you're not computing a natural control policy to handle arbitrary inputs of observations. Instead, you're assuming some notional uh, closed loop control system and calculating what the uncertainty in position is under uh, nominal observations. And then you're computing only a single nominal trajectory through the space. This results in much faster planning, but uh, will fail if your uncertainty ever gets large compared to the kind of spatial scale that uh, defines your environment. So at this point, I thought, well, we've got these nice optimal or near optimal map solvers. We have this notion of belief space planning. So why don't we just munge them together and get a nice optimal map foo solver? Unfortunately, this doesn't work. To understand why we, don't, we can't maintain that optimality, we have to look at how the structure of the MAPF problem differs from the structure of the map foo problem. So the MAPF problem has two important properties. The first is it's subject to in separate uh, binary constraints. So each robot is either in collision with another robot, or sorry, not in collision or in collision. And each of these robots has its own separate constraint. <coughs> the other important property is that the dynamics of the robots are independent. You can change what one robot does without changing the state of the other robot. What this means in practice is that a conflict involving a given set of robots can be resolved and can only be resolved by changing the paths of the robots involved in that conflict, which allows us to focus our search, allows us to uh, divide the subproblem which means that just about any efficient, at least search-based map solver will fundamentally look like planning for each robot separately, identifying disjoint subsets of robots that conflict with each other. So you might have two robots that interfere with each other over here, two robots that interfere with each other over here, 
solving for each of those subsets of robots separately, just ignoring the other robots, and kind of repeating that inner loop over and over again until you finally have resolved all your, your conflicts. If you do this right, you can uh, get guarantees that you will not only find a path, but you will find the optimal paths. Fairly obviously, I'm about to say that the structure of map foo differs in both of those important areas. So the first difference is there, uh, in how the constraints are defined. There's a bunch of different formulations you could use. The one I'm going to talk about right now is uh, putting a constraint on the probability that each robot collides with some other robot. So basically, a robot only has a 10% is allowed at most a 10% chance of failing due to collisions. What this means is now, instead of having n binary constraints, we have n non-binary constraints. Because you have only a little failure, not enough to, constraint, to uh, trigger a constraint violation, but enough that if you do this several times, you will eventually uh, cause a constraint violation. Partly as a result, the dynamics of the system are now coupled. So remember that we have replaced the configuration of the robot, a single point with a belief distribution as to where that robot is. Now, if in this example, if say one robot moves, it looks like a multi, uh, standard math problem. We've just got a bit of translation. But when we at, change what that second robot does, we have now actually changed the belief distribution for the first robot because there's some chance that they collide, which will reduce the probability of the robots rem going f further on, still being in the overlapping region of the belief distributions. So the important thing here is by ch changing what the red robot does, we ch uh, the action the red robot took, we have changed the state of the blue robot. Now this may sound kind of academic. Well, hopefully it does, given this is a conference. But it actually does matter, at least if you're willing to construct a really contrived example. So consider this case where we've got three robots that have basically no choice in action. Robot one just has to go that way, robot two, doink, robot three, like that. And now let us assume that our constraint is that no robot can have more than a 59% chance of colliding with another robot. When robots two and three are in E and H, respectively, there's a 20% chance of them colliding. When robot one and two are in C and F, respectively, there's a 50% chance of them colliding. This means that robot two has an aggregate 60% chance of colliding with other robots, which means that there is no solution to this problem as it stands. Now imagine adding an additional robot, which has two possible paths, a cheap, safe path through K, and an expensive, unsafe path through J, where there's a 20% chance of colliding with robot three. Any same map solver would send robot four down this way because it's safe, it's cheap. However, if you go the expensive route, there is now some probability that robot three collides with robot four before it ever gets to robot two. And that would reduce the, prob the aggregate probability of robot two colliding with some other robot to 58% which means that in order to find a solution, we deliberately have to deliberately drive one robot, expending a lot of fuel to do this, into another robot, or at least the belief distributions into each other. And for this reason, a map solver running in belief space will not maintain any of the optimality or completeness guarantees that it relies upon, because it can no longer only reason about the robots that actually run into other robots. The good news, at least for trying to make this into a paper, is that in practice this isn't all that big of a deal. We get good results ignoring it in part because the robots that get involved in collisions usually can actually change what they're doing. And we have some theory about cases where you might be able to recover at least some notion of completeness, etc. But I don't have time to get into uh, that at the moment. So. Now let's actually get to the planning algorithm. Uh, we call this UM star for uncertainty M star, which is based on the M star algorithm. M star, ignoring a lot of details that we don't have time for, roughly plans for each robot separately, runs, simulates that forwards, finds conflicts, then backtracks along the path leading to that conflict, and considers alternate actions for the robots involved in said conflict. To deal with the map through problem, we have to make a small modification. So we are now going to track both 
the threshold robots. These are the robots whose aggregate probability of collision along a given trajectory exceeds that threshold. And then there's the associated robots. These are the robots that have interacted with the threshold robots and thus can contribute directly to those threshold robots violating their constraints. So this is just an example. We've got robots one, two, three, and four. Robots one and two have some small probability of colliding. Continuing forwards, robots one and three has a probability of colliding. Then robots three and four really just kind of go in the same spot, triggering a constraint violation. To resolve this, we back up a little bit, but because there are no interactions between the threshold robots uh, and any other robot between where we are replanning and where the conflict occurs, we just consider alternate actions, alternate paths for the threshold robots. But if that doesn't work out and we have to back up even further, uh, we now see that robot three has interact or will have interacted with robot one along this trajectory between where we are replanning and where the constraint violation happened. So to try to resolve that constraint, we also have to consider alternate actions for robot one. Again, this will not result in a complete algorithm, but for the reasons I mentioned earlier, note that we are not replanning for robot two, even though it affects robot one, but in practice it works pretty well. So now we need to come up with a way of making this work on robots, or at least simulated robots. The first thing we have to choose is our belief representation. For single agent uh, planning, it's kind of standard to use just a Gaussian to represent uncertain localization. In our case, we're more interested in uh, robots that can do their own jobs really well, but might have, and thus can localize well, but might have synchronization problems. It's where the robot might be running fast, it might be running slow. To represent this, we assume that each robot has some percentage chance of just taking a delay action, staying where it is, instead of doing what it's supposed to. Basically, it's how we're trying to approximate the continuous distribution and velocities in the discrete space in which we are planning. The end result are belief distributions that kind of look like worms or trains trailing behind the nominal location of the robot. We then also make a bunch of other assumptions for uh, various computational reasons uh, that unfortunately I don't have time to get into, but at least you know that we have to make a few more to make this work. So, and then this is what we actually get out. So here, each of these, black, each of these colored bars represents the belief as to where uh, the planner thinks the robot ought to be. The more saturated the color, the higher the probability density at a given location. The colored dots represent where the robots actually were in one realization of the plan, where we actually simulated this, the uncertain dynamics. This was run with a probability threshold of uh, 10%, so no robot should collide more than 10% of the trials. And if you look down here, you see that there actually is a collision. But given that we're running 40 robots, each of which might have up to a 10% chance of collision, that's kind of expected. Okay, so the first question was, is planning with uncertainty actually worth anything? So on the left, we have a histogram of the probability of individual robots colliding while executing plans computed using UM star in blue and just M star ignoring uncertainty in red. You can see that UM star keeps uh, the collision probability well, uh, well bounded, whereas the probability of collisions using uh, ignoring uncertainty is basically unbounded. Unfortunately, this comes at a cost. On the, uh, your right, up top, you can see the probability of UM star in blue and M star in green solving a problem of a given size using the same sort of environment that we showed earlier just with varying number of robots. UM star can solve problems maybe a fifth the size of M star because this is a harder problem. Each robot is taking up effectively more of the volume of the search space, so interactions are more dense. They have some ability to kind of interpenetrate and generate nasty local minima. So the next question is, is mucking around with M star type stuff actually worth it? Uh, Van den Berg has done a little bit of uh, kind of primitive belief space planning using priority planners for uh, multi-robot systems. So we decided to compare against a basic priority planner where you plan for one robot, fix its path, plan for the next, over and so on and so forth. As you can see, 
UM star, actually a variant that, again, we don't have time to get into, uh, can handily outperform just running a priority planner in belief space, indicating that these more powerful, more sophisticated uh, map solvers actually do carry some benefit. Then there's a question of uh, what happens when you vary your safety bound. So on the left, you see this assess rate with a collision threshold ranging from 0% here to 10% in the red, and then to 30% uh, in that kind of cyan. So we see a non-monotonic uh, increase in difficulty. So obviously, guaranteeing complete safety is hard, because you have to keep the robots entirely away from each other. Then allowing a high probability of collision actually gets hard, because it means the belief distributions can kind of interpenetrate each other a significant distance before they suffer a constraint violation, which means you're now stuck in a deep local minima, and that's going to be hard for these methods to work their way out. Uh, then on the far right, you can see costs, and these actually do go down with increasing, uh, uh, with decreasing safety, as one would expect. Okay, so we did actually run this, try running this on some real robots. So here is a mixed reality simulation where we do not consider uncertainty, and we can see that a simulated robot has run right into a real robot. We try it again using UMSTAR, and uh, it executes safely. Ba most of the variation comes from not uh, the robots taking different times in a given controller, but uh, robots following different paths, enter controllers in different ways, get a lot of variation that way. So basically, in conclusion, we analyzed uh, and presented the MAPFU problem in the context of belief space planning, showed how to adapt MAPF algorithms to the MAPFU problem, and discussed what properties they would or would not retain, and showed that we can get robust and scalable planning for multi-agent systems in this way. So we'd just like to thank the biorobotics labs, some of whom are sitting over here, uh, as this is, they're the people with whom I did all the work. And I'd also like to thank Ronnie Stern, Ariel Fellner, and Dor, uh, with whom I had a number of discussions about kind of the theoretical aspects of this problem. So at this point, I'd be happy to take any questions while we're shifting to the last speaker. Questions? I'll let you pick out your question marks. Oh. Uh, so you know who it, you're talking to. So how would you modify this if you need to worry about the difference between a general collision versus trying to say do something dangerous like pass in front of a robot? Right? If you have if you have a belief state with some probabilities, then it's almost certainly worse in terms of the energy involved in the collision to try to pass in front of a mean versus to pass. In front oh, of okay. So for for that, you would need to start modeling the actual collisions. We have just assumed that a collision is a collision and robots disintegrate if they run into each other. Oh, I should take this off. Uh, wait, yeah, maybe not yet. Okay. Uh, you could obviously add some notion of, for a possible collision, compute the probability of the robots actually getting damaged, and then use that to set a constraint of a minimum probability of the robots failing due to uh, damage. But that that's kind both somewhat difficult and kind of just bookkeeping on top of the algorithm I don't think it would I think it would not really change much okay, well,